All right, welcome to the Teklahoma Newscast, week 41 of 2019, October 6th through 12. All right, Teklahoma is a nonprofit and volunteer run. They host around uh, 39 groups and two conferences throughout the year. They have free local events, and it supports Oklahoma's grassroots tech community. Yes, so if uh, you don't know what Teklahoma is, that's what it is. Yeah, we're always looking for volunteers, and we're always looking for uh, groups to sponsor meetups or just you know give give donations and give us money so we can uh, keep doing these cool things here in Oklahoma. All right, uh, Teklahoma Code of Conduct. Uh, it's at teklahoma.org forward slash code of conduct. And Teklahoma Incident Report at teklahoma.org forward slash incident. Yeah, that way um, if I say anything that uh, offends people, you can go to teklahoma.org and report it as an incident. That's so it's actually much more than that. But uh, for right now, um, for this little joke, it's, uh, that's what it is. But yeah, it's pretty cool. It uh, ensures a safe environment and a constructive environment for everyone involved. So uh, it's very, very important. Uh, if you want to get in touch with Teklahoma or anyone in Teklahoma, check out Teklahoma Slack. Uh, there's, there's speakers, tech talk, random jobs, and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, there's, a, there's a newscast channel. If you want to get a hold of anyone involved in a newscast, there's that. There's Golang, there's uh, Tulsa Web Devs, there's just Tulsa, there's oh, one about watches. It's not, not a whole lot of traffic there, but it's there. So, yeah, check that out. Uh, you can get more info at teklahoma.org forward slash spaces. And you can sign up for it at uh, slack.teklahoma.org. Let's uh, move on to local news. It's, uh, it's cold edition. And we finally got a cold front here in here in Oklahoma, and it's been kind of chilly. All right, Tulsa meetups. So uh, Monday, October 14th, we've got Tech Kogi down in Muskogee. They're going to be holding an animatronics workshop Monday, October 14th, uh, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the MPS Fab Lab, uh, Building G, Muskogee High School. They don't have a whole lot of information out there about what exactly is going to happen, but they do tell us it's twenty dollars to attend. Spots are limited, and you will leave with your own pair of animatronic cat ears. Yes, animatronic cat ears, and just in time for Halloween too. So, yeah, so show up, and then teched up. It was originally supposed to happen October seventh, but it got rescheduled. So uh, Monday, October 14th, 2019, they'll be talking about graph databases. Uh, 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Bricktown Brewery on Peoria in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is not Bricktown Brewery in OKC. This is Bricktown Brewery in Tulsa. Uh, David Loving, uh, Chief System Architect, will demonstrate real-world graphs as well as presenting an intro to Cypher query language. Uh, the, I believe that's with Neo, Neo4j, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's pretty cool, so that'll be interesting. Uh, Tulsa WordPress is also happening on uh, Tuesday, October 15th. This is their uh, October open meeting. It's an uh, evening to get together. Uh, it's just an open clinic to network, talk about WordPress, uh, work on projects, you know, just whatever. Uh, I believe there will be a presentation there. There are no details about what exactly that presentation is, but... There will be a presentation. Yeah, so that's good. Uh, Tulsa Web Devs and Code for Tulsa will be hosting co-working on Wednesday, October 16th. Uh, it's uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 36 degrees north. Uh, that's 36 East Cameron Street, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, just an informal hangout. Just show up. Work on whatever you going to work on, show people what you're going to work on, ask questions, mingle, uh, go out go out and uh, drink some beer if the, that's your thing afterwards. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, 36 Degrees North is a cool space. You're one of the, one of the co-working spaces here in Tulsa. 
it's a great building and it's a it's situated in the arts district so if you haven't been to the arts district it's a good excuse to go out there and spend a spend some time look around a little bit uh, also on Wednesday October 16th Tulsa data science is having the Python for data science meetup again it's going to be at the Tulsa County Central Library uh, show up uh, learn about Python and how to do some data science do some science on some data uh, Tulsa Open Source Hardware is happening Wednesday, October 16th as well. Uh, the topic is TD, TBD, to be determined. That's going to be, uh, it's, so yeah, it's a surprise. Don't know. But yeah, they're, they're, they're a good group, so show up and hang out with them. At 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Wednesday at the BNK Makerspace. For OKC, uh, Sunday, October 13th, it's uh, Free Code Camp OKC. That's their hot Hacktoberfest. Yeah, so, yeah, so show up, work on some HTML, CSS, JS, whatever, whatever you want, uh, whatever you're having trouble with, whatever you want to work on, help people. Yeah, just show up and hack on some stuff. OKC JS, uh, it's happening on uh, October 15th, Tuesday. It's uh, Vance Lucas is going to present integration testing for your REST API with uh, Frisbee.js. It's going to be uh, Starspace 46, uh, Tuesday, October 15th at 11.30 a.m. Uh, he'll show you how to use Frisbee to step into the shoes of your developer community and ensure consistency in the API response structures, keys, and types. It's great for ensuring your APIs don't change or break cross versions and remain uh, reliable and consistent so your developer community can strive. Uh, apparently I'm having troubles pronouncing developer tonight. Uh, let's see also on 10.15, Free Code Camp Norman has their weekly hack and learn. It's uh, Hacktoberfest week three for them. They're going to be talking about GitHub workflows. Apparently they talked about how to do how to create setup Git and uh, do some do a couple pull requests, but they're going to go in more in depth this time. Uh, Thursday, ten seventeen, Data Plus Creativity OKC is going to have uh, getting technical, social media, and extremism. It's a location that's a new Exaptive offices. I'm not quite sure where that is, but apparently someone knows where that is. Uh, Dr. Uh, Uger Kus, Kusnushi, I'm sorry if I mispr mispronounced that. Yeah, it's kind of foreign to me. All right, but he is a researcher at the AI Institute of University of South Carolina who will talk about the role of social media on the gun violence debate, how social media is being used to promote extremist pro propaganda ethical considerations, and how all those data points can translate into action. So that sounds pretty cool. That sounds interesting. Uh, yeah, social media is a hot topic, and we're trying to, we're still grappling with it, trying to figure out what it, what it all means to us and how we can use it effectively. All right, DevOps OKC is happening on 10-18, uh, Friday, October 18th. Uh, let's see, Josh... Maceo is going to present using PKI with Vault at uh, Star Space 46 at 11:30 a.m. Uh, Josh Maceo of AVO Consulting will be presenting on PKI with Vault. He'll discuss both use cases and implementation. I'm assuming when they say Vault, that means the HashiCorp product. Uh, I could be wrong, but I haven't heard of anything called Vault besides the one from HashiCorp. All right, Control Shift Code School is happening. It's a code school for survivors of interpersonal violence and abuse in Oklahoma City. Uh, volunteer to be a guest speaker or technical teaching assistant. Let's see, uh, sign up. Spreadsheet is in the Slack channel, uh, Control Shift School channel. So yeah, so this is this is cool. This is something cool. This is a new program out of Oklahoma City. This is one of the coding schools, but it's focused on helping survivors 
of uh, domestic abuse and interpersonal violence. So if you know anyone that's been in an abusive relationship that try, is trying to get back on their feet, make a better life for themselves, whatever, uh, this is this is something to check out. Yeah, it's a it's a good cause, and uh, I know quite a few people involved in this, and they're they're good people. So this I uh, hope this thing hope this works out, and I hope it's still around here in the next next years. All right, Thunder Plains 2019 is happening Tuesday, October 22nd. Buy tickets. You don't have to go, but if you buy the tickets, it'll help. Buy as many tickets as you want. You buy you, get, you need one ticket, buy ten. I don't know. Yeah, it, everything it, it helps take a home out. Uh, all the proceeds go to to fund it and help us do the cool stuff that we do. You can uh, go to thunderplainsconf.com to check it out. So it gets more information and sign up for and buy tickets. It's going to be in room 16 and room 17 in the Cox Convention Center in Oklahoma City. That's the Cox Convention Center in Oklahoma City, not the Cox Convention Center in Tulsa. Yes. I... Yeah. I think they could have, like, you know, differentiated a little bit between those two, but, you know, whatever. It's, uh, Theron Plains is a web developer conference. It uh, focuses on the tech that makes the web interesting. There's going to be some uh, JavaScript there. It's going to be a talk about Kubernetes, uh, REST authentication. That's your thing. I don't know. I, I like my REST authenticated personally. Uh, and it's going to be one, talk about web audio. So that's kind of that's interesting. So uh, yeah, buy your Thunder Plains tickets. Tuesday, October twenty second. That is about ten days. So it's coming up. So do it quickly. Buy lots of tickets. All right, national news. Uh, new Mac OS release edition. Yes, there's a big week for Apple. Uh, new, OS, new OS version, and they got into some sticky geopolitics. Uh, Mac OS Catalina uh, 10.15, or don't call it a maintenance release, was released. Uh, Catalina features support for iPad apps on, uh, on MacBooks, on uh, Mac OS full the full version of Mac OS, so some of your favorite iPad apps will be able to be used on a full Mac OS. I'm personally excited about this one because I own both. I've got a MacBook and iPad, and some of the iPad apps are pretty cool then. I'd like to use them on the desktop. Let's see, they're removing Dashboard officially. Dashboard is no more. I, have, I haven't seen anyone rage quit over this, so I don't know if anyone cares. Something I do care about that I think will make a lot of people happy is ZSH is now the default shell. Uh, new accounts will get ZSH by default, and existing accounts will get prompted to switch shells. Yeah, uh, ZSH, ZSH is fully compatible with Bash, so there shouldn't be any loss of functionality. Uh, in fact, ZSH has a ton more features to play with, so yeah, if you got if you just want to mess with your shell, you're going to you're going to have a lot of fun. It's a lot of stuff to do. Uh, I think it's worth the upgrade. I've been using it on other Unix likes, like Linux, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, as, as my shell for, for a while now. And yeah, it's nice. It's got some good features that make life very, very easy in some cases. Uh, next, uh, iTunes has been broken into several different programs now. Uh, music, TV, and podcasts take over respectively the music, video, and podcast functionality, while Finder takes over syncing duties. Uh, I've seen some stuff about people being bittersweet about this, but personally, it should have happened a while ago. It, they stuffed too much into iTunes, and it didn't really work that well. All right, Command Line Junkies now have uh, all the tools back as Mac Ports has been updated. Yes, like Tuesday or Monday when it was released, Mac Ports was not ready, so uh, you didn't have access to some of the cool stuff that you can they can install from there. Uh, yeah, so I installed it today, and yeah, everything's working. Yeah, I got T-Bucks back. 
let's see, the controversy over uh, hkmap.live app continued. I'm not sure what to say about this one. Uh, we kind of have our own problems with the attention, and it kind of feels like the powers that be are manufacturing a distraction to further their own goals. I don't know. But, um, yeah. Aside from that, Apple is a corporation. And, uh, don't trust corporations. They're out to make money. Uh, continuing in the Apple vein, remote code execution flaw found in iTerm2. Yeah, don't parse that output. <laughs> so, uh, there's an RCE found in an audit sponsored by the Mozilla Open Source Support Program. And one of the programs that they sponsored, and this was iTerm, iTerm2. A lot of developers use it, and a lot of developers are can do kind of questionable things at times. So how it works is the you do you get to give a malicious program, and it'll output code, and whenever you see this output code, iTerm2 will parse it. So if you have like a little program that gets uh, hijacked, and they say let's let's talk about ls, do ls. You just want to see what's going on in your directory, so it's in your directory, and it point it uh, sends out l and sends out a, a rm forward slash f forward slash, and then everything's gone. So that's kind of what happens. So it's a, that's a biggie. Uh, I term version three three six has been released, and it con contains a fix for the RCE. Everyone using I terms, I term two is recommended to upgrade as soon as possible. Moving on from Apple, well, we're going to talk about Facebook. Yeah, where are the kids up to these days? Uh, according to Facebook, it's gambling and alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, uh, an investigation between The Guardian and Danish Broadcasting Corporation found Facebook's automatic categorization... Uh, I can't, I'm not talking today. I cannot talk. Categorization of users labeled minors as having interests in gambling and alcohol. 740,000 miners are interested in gambling. 940,000 miners are interested in alcoholic beverages. Uh, in response, Facebook said, uh, we don't allow ads that promote the, si the sale of alcohol or gambling to miners on Facebook. And we enforce against this activity when we find it. We also work closely with regulators to provide guidance for marketers to help them reach their audience effectively and responsibly. I mean, they're probably not wrong about the miners. I mean, I'm old. I'm getting up there, but uh, I can still remember <laughs> that, yeah. yeah. Gambling alcohol was kind of interesting at the time. Um, the data mine is probably pretty accurate, and people generally ignore the consequences of feeding data into Facebook or, you know, or just free services sponsored by corporations who don't really have any discernible output or input. Really? Anyway, um, yeah. Yeah, it just kind of seems like it's the kind of thing, kind of conversation you have later in life with your parents. It's like, hey, yeah, remember that time when I said I had the flu? I didn't have the flu. Alright, Supreme Court Greenlight Accessibility Lawsuits. Yeah, Domino's Pizza versus Robles has been settled. Uh, it's basically, what happened is the Supreme Court refused, well, declined, I should say, to hear uh, Domino's Pizza vs. Robles letting the previous court decision stand. It, uh, this effectively means that retail websites are public and the ADA applies to them. Uh, this case started when uh, Guillermo Robles was unable to order a pizza because Domino's Pizza's website lacked the software to allow blind people to successfully use it. <laughs> Missed that one too. Yes, uh, Guillermo is blind. Yeah, and so it's kind of hard to, you know, to order a pizza when you can't see the website. And, you know, I think it's something we all understand. Sometimes we just want to order a pizza and technology works against us for whatever reason. It's bad Wi-Fi. Uh, you know, their load balancer is acting funny. 
they uh, didn't update their Stripe account. Uh, Robles, Robles's lawyer and Easter Seal Southern California are happy with the decision, while Domino's Pizza and the National Retail Federation are not. It's kind of hard to understand why a business would be against people buying their products, but, you know, whatever. All right, uh, moving on. International Day Against DRM 2019, or IDAD. Yeah, free to education materials. So uh, the Free Software Foundation is being joined by the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Creative Commons, uh, the Document Foundation, and 10 other orgs to protest DRM on education materials. This is textbooks and, uh, and websites that students are being like funneled towards. I'm not going to say forced to use because they really they do help out the educators with the workload. But at the same time, it does kind of lock everything into an ivory tower. All right, F the FSF calls DRM locked materials the Netflix of textbooks. And they're calling on Pearson to drop DRM from their electronic textbooks and course materials. And this is happening today, October 12th. So. It's kind of late right now, and we kind of missed it. But next year, keep on the keep on your radar. Watch uh, DefectiveByDesign.org and see what the what happens next year. Yeah, this is a this is a pretty good cause. Information should be freely accessible, and spreading knowledge and information is one of the core reasons behind Oklahoma. Oklahoma is not a large state, so we're kind of band together to help each other out and enhance the tech community in our areas. All right, speaking of enhancing the tech communities in our area, Oklahoma needs volunteers, like all the time. It's not, produ not necessarily having to produce newscasts or talking on camera. It could be presenting or it could just be, you know, helping out. There's a lot of people that wear a lot of hats. Well, I should say a few people that wear a lot of hats, and they could use as much help as they they can. They'll take the people that you can give them. Yes, so they they do a lot. Well, very few do a, quite a bit, and anything we can do to help them out, we should uh, we should try. We should do it. All right, Techlahoma.org. Check that out. That is the base, that's the internet base for Techlahoma. Once again, it's nonprofit and volunteer run. Uh, it hosts 39 groups and two conferences, uh, Thunder Plains, which is coming up on October 22nd, and 200 OK, which happens earlier in the year. Um, free local, we host, and it sponsors free local events. It keeps everything free, so it keeps uh, keeps things affordable and keeps things accessible. Yeah, this support and so. Support Oklahoma and support Oklahoma's grassroots tech, grassroots tech community. Yes, it's been a rough, it's been a rough, uh, rough presentation. But yes, so that's uh, that's a newscast for for this week, and and I will I will see you here uh, next week.